After two unsuccessful launch attempts, NASA's Boeing Starliner spacecraft successfully docked with the International Space Station. But not without its share of shortcomings. The latest glitches with the Boeing Starliner raise an important question. Why did NASA let this thing dock with the ISS? More humans in space. NASA currently has three crewed missions to the International Space Station scheduled for 2023, and it features Boeing Starliner's maiden flight with a human crew. Also on the timeline are two personnel transport missions aboard a reliable SpaceX craft. In today's video, our main focus will be on Boeing Starliner spacecraft, its major characteristics, launch profiles, and orbital flight tests. We will also cover the major technical errors and glitches that this spacecraft is currently facing and the new developments happening at the Boeing headquarters. So without any further delay, let's dive right into the video. NASA's Boeing Starliner spacecraft successfully docked with the International Space Station despite the absence of two thrusters and a faulty thermal control system, achieving yet another significant milestone in its unmanned test flight after two failed attempts. After launching from Cape Canaveral, the unmanned spacecraft successfully docked with the station at 8.28 p.m. Eastern Time, just over 25 hours after takeoff. Boeing is currently working with NASA to make the spacecraft suitable for transporting astronauts. There were cheers in mission control as the spacecraft completed its first docking with the station, which NASA described as historic. The docking was supposed to happen at 7.10 p.m., but controllers on the ground had to double-check telemetry data and make sure the lighting and communications were just right. When the docking mechanism Starliner uses to connect to the station malfunctioned, controllers had to retract it and then extend it again to reset it, which caused another delay in the docking process. Shortly after liftoff, two of Starliner's 12 main thrusters failed and the spacecraft's temperature control system also experienced an error. Neither of these issues, however, prevented the docking, and the thrusters performed admirably throughout the maneuvers necessary to get to the docking site after the launch. To Boeing's credit, they identified a decrease in thruster chamber pressure as the cause of the thruster malfunction. The company added that a third backup thruster was automatically fired by the capsule's flight control system, completing the burn. NASA's commercial crew program manager told reporters after the docking that some of the smaller thrusters used to position the spacecraft for docking had malfunctioned. The thermal control system is intended to keep the capsule's system at the appropriate temperature as it travels through the vacuum of space, and Boeing said it was continuing to monitor any issues with the system. When asked how they fixed the issue, they said they had to make manual adjustments to the cooling system that would normally be automated, which led them to believe that the docking had been successful. Boeing issued a statement claiming the spacecraft, quote, continues to perform well. Now, NASA selected Boeing and SpaceX in 2014 to each develop a new spacecraft to transport astronauts to the International Space Station after the space shuttle program came to an end. Even though they were both given the same assignment, the result from the two companies were completely different. Since SpaceX's uncrewed test flight in March 2019, the company has completed five missions with NASA astronauts on board, four of which included the company's maximum crew size of four. Instead of succeeding, Boeing has had a series of failures. When the spacecraft was first sent into space without a crew, it experienced software and communication issues that ended the mission before it could dock with the space station. It took the company 18 months to try again, and in August of last year, when engineers finally got the service module off the ground, they found that 13 of the valves were stuck in the closed position. It's been years since the Starliner was supposed to be ready. But NASA says that the delay was worth it because it allowed them to create a redundant and reliable program that will keep their astronauts safe. Now, let's talk about the key reasons why Boeing's Starliner had a rocky and unexpected start. The unmanned test flight of a Boeing Starliner was launched in December 2019 atop an Atlas V rocket provided by United Launch Alliance. The Starliner orbital test flight was supposed to put Boeing on par with SpaceX, which had completed an uncrewed test flight of its own vehicle, the Crew Dragon in March of 2019. However, the test flight uncovered serious software errors, forcing Boeing to scrap plans to dock with the ISS and return to the Starliner to Earth for an early landing. For the first time since 2011, American astronauts will be sent into space from American soil when SpaceX launches its Crew Dragon vehicle on its crewed Demonstration 2 mission in May 2020. Numerous other incidents have occurred with Boeing Starliner since its maiden voyage. The opportunity to redo the test flight kept getting pushed back throughout 2021 due to a schedule of heavy traffic visiting the ISS. The Starliner was finally able to return to the launch pad in August of 2021, but another attempt at a test flight was again thwarted. 
As a result of corrosion brought on by the Florida humidity, many of the spacecraft's valves failed to operate properly. The Starliner capsule was then detached from its rocket booster and brought back to the factory, where a temporary fix was implemented to get it back into the air as soon as possible for the orbital flight tests retry. After months of maintenance, on May 19th, Boeing made a third attempt at resuming the Orbital Flight Test 2 mission by launching the Starliner into space and docking it with the ISS. Boeing's Starliner crew capsule's first test flight with astronauts has been pushed back from February to April 2023. This is to place the mission after a busy stretch of crew and cargo missions to the International Space Station and give engineers more time to address issues found on an unpiloted test flight earlier this year. During the crew flight test of the Starliner, veteran NASA astronaut Butch Wilmore will serve as commander, with former Space Station Commander Suni Williams serving as co-pilot. Due to the success of the Starliner's unpiloted demonstration mission to the station in May, Boeing and NASA have decided to move forward with a crewed test flight. Officials from NASA and Boeing have stated that they hope to begin the Starliner crew flight test as early as February. The space agency has announced that the target date for the test flight has been pushed back to April 2023. The Starliner test flight has been pushed back to after the February and March crew rotations aboard the space station using SpaceX's Dragon and the Russian Soyuz vehicles. Although the Starliner's unpiloted test flight earlier this year was successful in its goals of docking with the space station and returning to Earth for landing, engineers are still hard at work finding solutions to anomalies discovered on the May demo mission, also known as Orbital Flight Test 2. Two Starliner crew modules, each with necessary space-rated durability, are available from Boeing. In December 2019, it participated in Boeing's first unpiloted orbital demonstration mission, but its flight was cut short due to software issues before it could dock with the station, so it was unavailable for use in the crew flight test. The capsule made a safe landing in New Mexico after it had successfully returned to Earth. Later this year, at Boeing's Starliner factory at Kennedy Space Center in Florida, the spacecraft's power and propulsion section, or service module, will be attached. At the conclusion of each Starliner mission, the service module is discarded and burns up in the atmosphere. After completing the crew flight test, Boeing is refurbishing the second Starliner crew module that flew on the OF-2 mission in May to prepare for Boeing's first operational crew rotation mission to the space station. In August, Boeing's Starliner program manager Mark Nappy said that after reviewing the data from the OCT-2 mission, the company's engineers had settled on four areas to make minimal adjustments to the crew flight test vehicle. The spacecraft's thrusters for orbital manipulation and attitude control are one such area. The OFT-2 spacecraft had 20 OMAC engines, but two of them failed prematurely during the orbit insertion burn immediately after liftoff. As a result of the other engines picking up the slack, the rest of the flight went off without a hitch. According to Nappy, the investigation team found that debris in the propulsion system was likely the root of the issue with the OMAC engines. Technicians have made sure the spaceship's propulsion system is clean ahead of the crew test flight. Multiple smaller reaction control system thrusters failed during the Starliner's rendezvous with the station. According to Nappy, low inlet pressures and some manifold pressure dynamics that delayed the sensor responses were likely to blame. The problem can be fixed by making a very small change to the propulsion system's timing and tolerance settings. High pump pressures were detected during the OFT-2 mission, so Boeing is also removing some unnecessary filters from cooling loops on the spacecraft's thermal control system. During the Starliner capsule's final approach to the space station, the sensors comprising the vision-based Electro-Optical Sensor Tracking Assembly, or VESTA, functioned admirably. The Starliner's flight computer is autonomously guided in for docking thanks to data from the VESTA sensors, which report on the spacecraft's position and closure rate. During the OFT-2 docking sequence, however, the rendezvous navigation system produced more data than anticipated. In preparation for the Starliner's rendezvous with the International Space Station, Boeing is increasing the Starliner's flight software load. NASA held five rounds of fixed-price competition for private companies to develop human-rated spacecraft between 2010 and 2014. It was the quickest and least expensive way to get American astronauts back into space. With the agency's approval in 2014, Boeing and SpaceX were awarded fixed-price contracts to speed up the development of reusable American spacecraft. 
Boeing's Starliner was expected to have higher development costs than SpaceX's proposal, which proposed developing a crew variant of the Cargo Dragon vessel, which was already in operation, transporting valuable supplies to and from the ISS. SpaceX currently launches and recovers two crewed missions annually to ensure NASA astronauts are always present on the ISS. NASA ordered three more SpaceX commercial crew transportation missions to the ISS in February, bringing the total number of trips to the ISS to nine, guaranteeing the United States' continued presence in space through 2028. When Boeing's Starliner becomes operational, NASA plans to reduce SpaceX and Boeing's annual crewed missions to once per year. If current trends continue, however, Boeing's Starliner won't be truly needed by the transportation industry until the year 2029. Unfortunately for Starliner, the Atlas V rocket it uses to launch into orbit will be retired at the same time as the International Space Station in 2030. With the exception of the unmanned Starliner test flight to the ISS, Boeing and NASA have only agreed to fund three crewed missions. The questions of how Boeing will launch Starliner into space following the retirement of the Atlas V rocket remains unanswered. So, what are your thoughts about NASA's Boeing Starliner? Will it be able to carry out a test flight in April 2023 or not? Share with us in the comments below. Also, if you enjoyed the video, give it a like and share it with your friends so we can keep making videos like this. For more content like this, subscribe to our channel. Also, be sure to check out our other videos as well. Thanks for watching. Well.